You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Simone. It's not the prettiest, it's not the fastest, it's not the smoothest, it's not the newest or the most modern, but a Suzu MUX is the most popular ute-based SUV in Australia. How is that possible? Well, it's probably because the MUX is just smart to buy. It's spacious, reasonably comfortable, reasonably priced, very reliable, and with an engine that is famous for being one of the most enduring units available today. Now, in this video, I'm looking at the latest 2019 MUX in its top LST trim. So, the MUX has found its market and for all the right reasons. However, Isuzu seems to be pushing it a little with this model. This is the sixth year that it's remained pretty much similar, with a few minor changes, and in more ways than one, the industry is moving on. The late 2017 facelift brought plenty of novelties on fronts other than design, but still nothing that is really cutting edge. So does buying smart still outweigh buying modern? Well, seems so, judging on the sales. So let's see just how long the smart can stay smart. Design-wise, there's not much new for 2019. Probably the last round of significant changes came in the 2017 facelift, and even then you really had to know what you're looking at to spot them. From the side, it looks pretty boxy with huge wheel arches. This C-pillar looks unnecessarily big. The rear looks pretty coherent though, and is probably my favourite part of the exterior design. But here's the good thing about Isuzu. They give you a whole heap of optional extras that not only enhance the performance of your MUX, but also help to personalise the design. For example, my LST top trim level has a few extra additions like a bull bar, bonnet protector, weather protectors for the windows, roof rails, reassuring side steps, tow bar and similar. All in all, see it as a base canvas for you to beef up as you see fit. Now this engine is very familiar to our Cartel TV team in more ways than one. First of all, Jenny recently reviewed the D-MAX with the same engine. Secondly, last year we reviewed both the 2018 D-MAX and the 2018 MUX, both of which had the same engine. Even before that, the respected 4JJ1 3.0-litre diesel has been around for a while now, and it's one of the most reliable engines in its class. You may want more power and refinement, but you just have to appreciate the reassuring push and reliability. Just like in the D-MAX, this 3-litre diesel produces 130 kilowatts of power and 430 newton metres of torque from 2,000 revs. It also consumes about 8 litres per 100 kilometres on average. The MUX can be rear-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. Honestly, I don't really see the point of the rear-wheel drive only one. I mean, it can be fun in certain types of cars, but four-wheel drive is just what this car should have, and luckily, that's the version I have here. The engine is sufficient, especially if it's kept around the 2,000 revs sweet spot. However, the difference is noticeable once you get some 500 revs below or 1,000 revs above that. It just seems like it's out of breath. Thankfully, the auto gearbox is very well aware of this shortcoming and it keeps the revs within the happy range most of the time. It shifts smoothly and fast enough. For those of you who want to tow, I should point out that the MUX can tow 750 kilos of unbraked cargo or 3,000 kilos of braked. If you go off-road, you'll love the four-wheel drive, low-range gearbox, 230 millimetres of ground clearance and proper underbody protection. The only things it lacks are LSD and locking differential for the rear. On one hand, this makes it less expensive to buy and fix, and you're completely unlikely to have any problems with these. But on the other hand, it does take away a bit from the off-road ability. Still, unless you drive on some really tough terrains, you shouldn't have any problems in the MUX. If you keep your MUX on city streets or motorways most of the time, then the suspension adjustment from 2017 really helps. It makes the ute-based vehicle a lot more civilised when not loaded and helps control as well. This does not mean the ride is cushioned, but it is pretty good. What is not the best is heavy steering at low speeds. I mean, it's bearable, but I want more than bearable. Now let's take a step back and do a quick summary of the driving experience. Now I've mentioned driving on the motorways, hauling loads of cargo and up to seven people, and going off-road. The MUX can actually give all of this in one reliable and affordable package. Sure, it has its flaws, but all in all, that's a pretty solid offer. On the inside, the MUX really does look a bit outdated. The first reason is the fact that the design has had some time to grow old, and the second one is that it's heavily based on a ute, and those have other priorities than flashy interior looks. In saying that, I also have to say it doesn't look hideous either. It looks clean and practical, easy to use, well put together and well organised. Just what you would want in a ute. Except this isn't really a ute. The 8 inch touchscreen in this trim level and the one below it has satellite navigation, USB and Bluetooth. There is no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but the screen is also used for the rear parking camera. This trim also adds a 10 inch rear monitor and nice ambient lighting. 
The steering wheel is not the best looking, but it's functional and well positioned. And just like in the D-Max, it doesn't have telescopic adjustment. So make sure you check if its distance is right for you. The height shouldn't be a problem since tilt adjustment is present. There is loads of storage on the inside, including two glove boxes, up to 12 cup holders sprinkled in all three rows, bottle holders in door pockets, and similar. I do miss a better tray for the phone though. The second row is better than in the D-Max. The MUX offers 60-40 rear seats with reclining and folding functions. Legroom is awesome, and even three adults will be fine in the second row. There's also this USB charging point and a 10-inch display screen. Step into the furthest row of seats and things are understandably different. At most, I'd be able to endure short trips back here if I needed to, which is actually better than some of the competitors. But for kiddies, it's actually not a bad space back here. And third row air vents, cup holders and phone compartments are nice additions. If you don't need seven seats often, but you enjoy the MUX's famed reliability, you probably want to know about the boot size. With all seven seats up, you get 235 litres of space, which is definitely not enough. But once again, it actually has more space than some of its competitors with all seven seats up. Drop the third row and you get 878 litres of space with a flat loading floor once you get past this weird step at the very back. Drop the second row and the available space rises to 1,830 litres. The floor is pretty flat, but there's definitely an incline as you approach the front of the car. In terms of safety, you get trailer sway control, rear camera, ABS, ESC, EBD, traction control, electronic stability control, emergency brake assist, hill start assist, hill descent control, rear view camera and side anti-intrusion bars. Now even though this is the top trim, it is missing some of the more common safety features that people have come to expect, but we have here blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert, which can be added to any trim across the range for an extra $990, which helps get the MUX up where it needs to be. Pricing for the 2019 MUX starts at $42,990 for the 4x2 LSM and works its way up to $56,990 for this top LST 4x4, not including some of the optional goodies that we have. Isuzu have also improved their service and warranty to a six year, 150,000 kilometre warranty, six years roadside assistance and seven year or 105,000 kilometre capped price servicing program, which is a nice deal sweetener. So is the MUX still good enough to be offered? Well, it is a bit outdated in some respects, but people buying an MUX prefer cost efficiency, reliability and practicality over other things. The MUX still offers all of those, so it is bound to have its fair share of the market in 2019. However, it is in need of a proper update in the next few, and I do mean few years, or else the bearably outdated and good enough will simply become obsolete. Thanks for watching Cartel TV. Now, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel, join us on all forms of social media, and drop us a comment letting us know which car you'd like to see reviewed next. See you soon.